What's happening, everyone? Freedom of Fantasy here from Listic Song Running. How are you guys doing? Welcome to yet another episode of so Songs Deconstructed Production. Where? What, what did I call it? I forgot. Just check the title. You'll be fine. What we're doing here is we're looking at a session uh, and logic that I created for the intro of the artist series and how I created it. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the kind of choices I made artistically. I want to talk a little bit about the mixing. This is super simple. This is just eight bars of music, as you can see, and pretty much, you know, what's happening here is just basically. Basically, it's just three bars of music, and uh, you might have already heard this if you watched the latest artist series about Radiohead, but if you haven't, here's um, what it sounds like. Don't be surprised if the first two bars, nothing really happens in terms of the video. That's kind of where I'm still talking, so I did a little bit of pre-roll so that um, a little bit of music will play while I'm still talking, and then we get the video on the three right here. So let's play it and see what happens. All right, so that's it. And let's talk about what I did here. Well, first of all, I'm, I should say that this is, I think, the second version I wrote for this uh, out of, I think, three versions. And this one is the one I like the best. Uh, so what I wanted to do for this uh, season of the artist series. So for the first one, the background music is kind of all electronic, kind of trap influenced. And I wanted to keep that essential idea of that but I wanted to add some guitars into it since this new season is all about rock artists, right? So that's why all of a sudden we get all of these guitars down here. Um, but I still wanted to keep that essential trap vibe of it. So I still have the groove that is kind of trap based and we still have the kind of synth sounds going on in the background. So what I think makes the music for this channel sound holistic, and this is kind of my trademark sound for holistic songwriting, is these kinds of arpeggios down here. So I'll play that for you. This is kind of what I started with on the synthesizer. All right, so this is uh, using Pan Man, just doing some simple panning here. You could do the same thing with the tremolo, uh, just the one built in into Logic. I don't know why I used Panman for this one. But so this is the basic one I made. I made this on my Minimook Voyager. And uh, so the actual filtering that you're happening is something I did live. Um, and I think I probably played this through external MIDI. So I sent a MIDI signal out from my computer into the Minimook and recorded that as it came back in. So it just had to turn the knob. I didn't actually have to play the thing. Um, so this is kind of what it started with, and then I had a completely different groove with it that didn't really do anything for me, so I changed all of that. And um, once I had this, I think the next thing I did was actually the groove. So the groove is, uh, is pretty much where it's at here, and this is, I'm sure, what a lot of people here will want to know about. So let's just go into the groove here. Well, first of all, it starts with this kick right here. Let me just uh, make that a little bit smaller. There we go. So this is kind of this really lo-fi, rough bass drum sound that I really like. It's layered with the second kick, which adds a little bit of more oomph to it, just because I want this intro to sound huge and impressive. So this is what the second kick sounds like by itself. It's also kind of lo-fi, which I like, and together, right? So it's just, it just fattens up that first kick here. Then we have this clap, which I, I love the sample. Almost sounds like a snap. That's a really, definitely really cool sample. Then I added, and so this is basically the entire groove. That's kind of all it is. Then we have the hi-hat here, which is, it kind of fills it all up. That's kind of what adds the trap sound to it. So that's kind of it. There's a little bit of Timeless on it, which is a, a Fab Filter plugin that just is basically kind of delay uh, and some reverb here, of course. Uh, I added some gain for some reason. Oh, I just turned it, uh, made it mono. That's kind of, because I think the original sound isn't mono, probably. Yeah, as you can see, it's slightly turned to the right. I just wanted it to be completely mono. Uh, I just wanted my groove to come right from the center. Um, so this is kind of the essential groove. It's just those four tracks. But then here, these four tracks here, I think, are what add all the magic to it. And this is, I think, what really adds that special sauce to it. So first of all, uh, this second backbeat here, so I'm not really counting this as a backbeat. This is more like a, like an offbeat kind of snare. But the main snares here are these three snares, right? So these are, these are like the ones that come in on the three of each bar. 
on the second big backbeat here, we add, I added another snare to just kind of make, make that sound a little bit bigger, like this. Right, just to add a little bit of flavor to that, just so not every snare sounds exactly the same. Then we add this percussion, and this is where it really gets interesting, I think. Then we have this track, which is basically just an open hi-hat with some filtering on it. And then lastly, we have another piece of percussion here. By the way, if you're wondering why this is only three bars and not four, uh, it's just because the intro isn't that long. I don't want people to sit through like this really long, arduous intro. I just want to like get it over with uh, quickly. And the video was there first, and then I wrote the music to that video. So um, yeah, don't be surprised that it's not four bars. Like obviously it would make more sense musically if it was four bars, but you know, it's it works fine as it is, I think. And I don't think a lot of people notice that it's even three bars. At the end of this, I'm just adding a drop, which is something I've just, and you know, I'm doing on pretty much all of my intros right now. It just adds a little bit of like heft to everything I'm doing before it. Then we have a little bit of a needle drop, which is just a little bit of sound design. It's just, you know, a little bit of ear candy there. Uh, then we have a reverse moving into it. Right, that's just basically a symbol reversed. Then we have this thing here, which is, uh, gosh, what did I do here again? This was a percussion track, which I reversed. Let me see what it sounds like if I um, undo the reversing. So here's what it sounds like by itself. All right, so it's kind of like, so it was kind of like a drum beat, right? And uh, let's take the reverse out again, and this is what it sounds like now. Cool. It's just basically um, adding a little bit of tension right before this swipe here. And the same thing happens here, a little bit of tension before we move into the actual video. Uh, then we have this layer here, which is doing that. That's just the sound effect. Straight up sample I dragged in. It's very soft in the actual mix. In the actual mix, here's what it sounds like just with the drums. And that gives a little bit more finality to that three bar thing, right? Because that's kind of the challenge. If you only have three bars to make music, to make that seem final, to make that sound logical, you kind of need all of this, these little things to just kind of bring it back to like, and here's where the one should be. Here's where that phrase should end. And so that's, that's why I put that in, even though it's very subtle in, in the background. Then we get this layer here, which I think is just a bass. I played this on my Roland Juno 106. And it has a compressor on it, which is triggered by audio one. And audio one is what? That's probably the bass drum, right? Um, let's see. Yeah, see? So there's some side chaining going on here with the kick drum. All right. Uh, then we have this little thing here, which I already talked about. This is done on my uh, Moog Voyager. Then we talk, We already talked about this one. This is kind of the trademark holistic songwriting sound. It's those little arpeggios going, going on in the background um, with a lot of reverb on them. They're just super subtle, but it's just diddle diddle diddle. there's a lot of movement in the background. And this is kind of my message with all of my videos. There's a lot more stuff in the background than you first think. I wanna convey the idea that, you know, there's actually so much more going on in the background. Listen to this production thing here. Listen to this songwriting thing over here. Look at the lighting in this video, look at, the way that he was directed in this video, you know? So that's kind of what I think is interesting about holistic songwriting. And I want to convey that musically through something like this. Um, and there's another one uh, down here, actually. There's another little arpeggio. Also played on my Mini Moog, I think. Oh, wait, actually, sorry. Um, this is just my Juno. But then here, right there, this is the Mini Moog. Also very subtle if you listen to it in the entire mix. But 
here's where it shines. Here's where you really hear it, like, and the, the kind of end of it, that's that's kind of when it comes through, peeks, peeks its little head through a little bit more. And um, again, I like that. I like that sense of, oh, there was something I didn't notice before. That's kind of the exact feeling I want to convey through my videos. And so I, th I thought it would be, um, it makes it would make sense to do the same thing in the music as well. Then over here, we have another bass. This again is straight up Mini Mook Voyager. And you can hear that it's analog from those little jitters here. I like that. There's like all these little details in it uh, that I really like. It's not something you would get with a software synth. It's a really minor difference, but uh, I hear it and I like that kind of stuff. Then we have a reverse crash, which is something I love doing uh, in stuff like this. Also, it brings, again, more finality to that last uh, to, to that last bar, just so it feels a little bit more logical. Right, so this is what it was at first. This is kind of the entire track. Let's listen to that without all the guitars. This is kind of what it was at first. Right? I mean, obviously it was mixed differently. Obviously these synths here were a little bit louder. But it kind of was lacking something honest, something authentic. And since, again, I wanted the second season to be about rock artists, I wanted to add in a little bit of rock, a little bit of guitars here, something very human. So uh, that's these four tracks here. The first day I recorded this, I played these two tracks here. And uh, first of all, I played this. Right, which together sounds like this. And I'm kind of, I kind of feel sorry now for not playing da -da 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 at the end there. That just would have sounded a little bit more final, but fine. Um, and then I played the second guitar over it, which just kind of does its own thing a little bit higher on the neck. It's also a little detuned, which I like. It, it just gives it a little bit more authenticity. Uh, I really like that. And together, these two guitars sound like this. And that already fuses into something that I wouldn't have expected if you just played them individually. And that's what I really love about guitar work is that very quickly by layering two guitars on top of each other, you get these sounds that sound really interesting and new for some reason. I think together these sound more interesting than uh, the two tracks by themselves. I especially love the downbeats of each of these, mostly because it sounds almost like a phaser or a sort of, sort of chorus effect when it's actually really doubled, but that's not what it sounds like. It sounds like the second layer is almost like an effect to that first one. And that's something I think is just really interesting. Listen to this again. Just listen to the downbeats of these. Hear that? Especially that first one. Here. That I think sounds so cool. It really sounds like one of those, what is that called? Um, like the those pitch pedals that like add an octave to your whatever you're playing. And that kind of stuff happens so quickly when I'm playing guitar. So listen to all of this so far. Um, these two tracks here, I came up with the next morning. So this is what I heard the next morning, and I was like, oh, you know what? I know exactly what this needs. So here's what it is right now. So what I was hearing, I was like, oh, wow, this sounds really cool. But you know what? I'm missing just a little bit of like, it just needs to sound a little bit softer, a little bit more dreamy in a way. And so what I came up with was these, um, these harmonics over here. What is that? Are these two grouped or something? Is it another bug? It's another bug. That's annoying. All right. Well, you know, that's logic for you. Um, so these are basically just harmonics that I played to add to this guitar part here. And here's what they sound like by themselves. Never mind this. Now, as you can see, I didn't record these all in one go, which I don't think is necessary for something like this, especially playing harmonics beautifully can be difficult on a clean guitar. So I just uh, hit record on my keyboard and just recorded a bunch of these. Then I recorded a bunch of these and then I just picked the best ones and 
cut together cut them together like this uh, super simple but look what it adds to this guitar part if you if you have these I'm, I'm gonna play it without them uh, first again so you can hear just the guitar parts and then I'm gonna add in the harmonics and see how it just like adds so much sweetness so much flavor to that And now listen to it in total. Right? I just love that so much more than... Almost sounds flat now, doesn't it? And with it... It's just great. I really love it. Um, and then down here, we just have those sound effects. You already heard that writing. I just turned up my my microphone and just started writing with like I, I think I got like a sharpie or something and it's just a bunch of sound effects that sound like this what else do we have here oh yeah and these are just like some swoosh effects um, these are actually just samples that I found somewhere um, I mean I didn't find them somewhere I bought them but uh, yeah so but those I didn't make myself Every, everything else up here this is just super weird and annoying. Um, all of these I did make myself though. So um, let me play those for you again. So right here, I did a little bit of automation on it just to add some movement to the to the brush strokes. Right, and then this like is like comes in exactly when I'm uh, I'm doing this kind of work here, the shading. And that's kind of it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Another breakdown of my session, one of my sessions. Um, we're going to do another breakdown on the music of the artist series next month. And uh, until then, let me know if there's anything you want to know about in terms of production. Uh, is there anything you want to hear me talk about some more, go more in depth in the future? Or don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Take care and stay gefährlich.